do a quick little door prize. This is my handsome husband, Scott, and he's here with me. So we're going to do some uh, door prizes, and we're going to do it really fast. Okay, so this is a calendar for 2020 Ooh. that we're selling back there, and this one, lovely piece of artwork. All of these things have my artwork on them, okay? So I'm going to ask for the oldest person here, and I know this is really hard to admit this, but is there anyone in their 90s? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay, let's, anyone have a birthday this month? Okay, yay. This month? Load up. Hold on. I'm gonna run out here. Okay, so we're gonna say the gold and these three here. Yeah, yeah. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I love that saying. Scott hates it. <laughs> That's why I say it. <laughs> this goes back to the lady in the gold. Okay, how about anyone who is still teaching? These are little gifts. Anyone still teaching? Um, anyone who, oh, yay. Oh, you should get the whole hand. <laughs> anyone um, retired in the last year? Oh, here we go. One, two. They're tiny, but I love teachers. Uh -huh. There you go. And anyone? I just had a new grandbaby. Her name is Effie Olive, and that, she's named after Scott's grandmother who lived to be 106. Anyone else have a new grandbaby? With Nana. Nana. There you go. <laughs> there you go. How old is your... <laughs> what kind of grandma are you? <laughs> Congratulations. So, um, I'm going to talk to you today about what I do and how I design fabric. Um, the way I design it all by hand, because I don't know how to use the computer, <laughs> and I don't want to know how to use the computer. <laughs> so, um, I'm not sure how other people design their fabrics. Um, all the Moda designers, and oh my goodness, I think there's like 85 of us now. When we get together, we don't talk about designing fabric. We talk about our grandchildren and our children. And so I really don't know how other designers uh, work, but I'll just kind of show you my process as we go. Um, as I mentioned, I was a school teacher, and my whole reason for doing this, other than to meet you lovely people, is to educate you on what all goes into this process. Because I guarantee it's more than you think. <laughs> and so what I'd like to do is if you have any questions, just yell them out or, you know, you don't even have to raise your hand. <laughs> just, you know, yell them out because I'll get really excited about this. I get very excited talking about what I do. And sometimes I talk too fast. <laughs> so, um, you know, just if you need clarification or have questions, please just shout out your questions. So, um, the way I got started, because a lot of people say, how did you get started? Well, back in the old days, 20 years ago, um, it was a lot different than now. We didn't have computers, you know, and things like that to search online. So um, I was a school teacher, and we would have classes at our home in the summer. I was an art teacher. You don't want me teaching math. Oh, good land. Um, we would have these art lessons at our house, and we would have 90 kids a week come to our house, um, rotate through on every hour. We'd have a new group of kids rotate in. And um, one of the people who, uh, whose child I taught, her name was Ann McKinney, and she had a pattern company called Circle of Friends, or My Sister's Closet, um, back in the early 90s. And she made the soft sculpture dolls. Remember back then, you know, they were so, so popular. Um, 
Well, I illustrated the covers for her on her patterns. And we started talking, and she said, well, have you ever thought about putting these on greeting cards? And so we started looking into that. And so my illustrations became greeting cards. Well, it kind of snowballed, to be honest. Um, within three months, I quit my job teaching. Within um, six months, we had employees. Within nine months, Scott quit his job teaching. <laughs> Within about a year and a half, we built a building on our property that was big enough to house all of this. And we had our own small greeting card company called Saltbox Illustrations. And um, that's us. <laughs> um, so we really didn't know what we were doing, but you know we were trying our best. Well, at one of our first trade shows, um, it was at a quilt market because my designs looked like they could be in a quilt store sometimes. Um, this big group of people came through in suits. And whenever anyone came through your booth in suits, you knew, oh, I better pay attention. You know, these people are coming through. Well, about a week later, I got a call. And um, this lady said, hi, my name's Cheryl. I'm from Moda Fabrics. Would you like to design fabric for us? And I said, OK. <laughs> and that's how we got started. And um, I've done over 100 collections since then. I do between three and six collections a year, which is a lot, because my collections take about six weeks to do, and that's working every day. Um, so that's a lot, but I love it. I love what I do. I feel very fortunate. I also still design calendars and greeting cards. Everything in this little booth I've designed has all my artwork on it. So all the books, all the towels, all the everything. <laughs> I don't cook. <laughs> I don't cook well. <laughs> We're all thin, and there is a reason for that. <laughs> Mom doesn't cook well. <laughs> all our kids marry people who could cook well. I don't get it. I think there was a reason. <laughs> so, um, a lot of the times, um, a lot of times, my designs start from products that I've illustrated for a different company. So um, the bee fabric line, which is the one I'm going to talk to you about today, Be Joyful, started from a group of prints that I did that were in like Hobby Lobby, things like this. I did a bunch of um, prints, um, framed prints, things like that. And um, Moda liked this idea as a fabric line. And so we kind of went from there, and I developed it from there. And so that's what I'm going to talk to you about here now. Um, but I do try to get my art on other things. So that's something that, um, as I talk, I'll be mentioning. I'm what they call a licensed artist. That means that um, anything that I get my art on, anything, I get a very, 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 small portion of <laughs> I mean really small <laughs> like like let's just say for like a $25 item I get between 35 and 50 cents oh, wow. oh. <laughs> hallelujah for you I tell you. she said I need a raise <laughs> but I'm very fortunate what I do so you know I, I every job I'm just lucky to do what I do so um some of the artwork then is either on fabric, so it might go from fabric to a garden flag, or it might go from um, note cards to fabric, so it goes back and forth, and I use all that art any way I can. So when I'm designing, I start with line art, and because for me, I love pen and ink. I, I love pen and ink. Um, I just, I like the detail. Um, the lady who was talking about the paper piecing, um, it's so interesting to me because I like that exactness. Not in housekeeping, <laughs> but in 
my drawings and things like when I was a little girl my dad walked into my bedroom and put a snow shovel in the middle of my room and it stood and so that just kind of tells you right there how it goes so when we started with the B group my first thing and we're, I have four very kind people who have offered to help me out here we're going to walk my artwork around because it's just a, more impressive to see the real thing than it is to see a PowerPoint of it. So could my four ladies come up here? Let's give them a hand. So I'm gonna just kind of, if you wanna just kind of meander through so everyone can see, I'll just start handing you all things. So I'll start with a drawing. And um, as I said, I love pen and ink. So this line was a B line. So I started with my B. This is how it started. So I'll give, you, I'll give you a couple here. Then I love illuminated letters. You know, like the old letters in manuscripts that, um, like the, in Bibles and things, and the first letter would be a B, and there would be all these vines going through it, and then the le next letter would be smaller. So I knew I wanted this to be really scrolly and like have that feel of illuminated letters. So I came up with this border. And you'll see it here as it walks around. And then I started putting the bee in the border, like this. And then I had another bee. It looks like the same bee, but it's actually a different bee. So this is how it's starting. I'm going to just let you take as many of these as you want. And then I wanted to do some other things, like some bees caps. Keeping that same border, I used the same border, but that's going to pull this all together. And this is all how I wanted, I envisioned the panel. And I usually do a panel with my fabric groups. I know they're coming back into trend. I made it through the um, panel recession, <laughs> you know, where nobody wanted a panel. Um, and now they're kind of coming back into style again. But my fabric lines have always had panels because for me, the panel is, um, it's the main part of the story. And when I design a fabric line, it's like writing a story for me. And the panel, it, it's the main part. It's the main part of the story. And then all the little polka dots and the, and the plaids and things like that, they're just the supporting characters for my, for my fabric line. Also on my panel, I wanted to include things that had those illuminated letters. And so this, these are kind of what I came up with for my, some of my illuminated letters. I'll let you take four of these, I think. Here, if I can give you one more. It's going to be tricky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I wanted, um, I wanted to have three with the illuminated letters and three with the border. And that's how that developed. Well, when I got it all together, um, this is how the panel looked when it was drawn. And this is half size. So my panels, when I design them, they're half size of what the um, actual finished product's going to be. Scott's going to tell me what I'm forgetting. Oh, he's heard this story so many times. <laughs> he could tell this story. He really could. After, um, after I get the panel all drawn, then I start doing the little tiny, tiny little coordinates and things. That's where I really love to um, get started. And the nice thing is for me, I only have to draw them in a three by four inch square. It has to be some increment of 12. And then Moda repeats it. So sometimes I keep it that small, but if you know if it's a bigger, um, if it's a bigger pattern, then it's going to go bigger. So let me show you what I mean by that. So this one here, I want it, you know, wouldn't fit into a three by four inch repeat. I also love hand lettering and hand script. So I sit around and and do the lettering and things. <coughs> So the normal ones would be really tiny like this when I draw them. It's getting harder as I get older too, let me tell you. <laughs> I have this theory that um, impressionism is not really about 
getting the feel of the light. It's about getting older and not being able to see. <laughs> so, so these are a couple of the uh, small little. Come down the center. Okay. And I also want to just kind of show you how I develop a pattern. So this one here is a damask or damask. I'm not sure how to say it. I've never learned. So um, I love that kind of pattern. And you're familiar with it. They use it in upholstery a lot. Um, old wallpaper used to have it. I love that kind of pattern. And it's kind of going to have a central image and then a lot of scrolly stuff around it and then that just that same motif that's what the main part of the pattern is called is repeated well to get this teeny tiny little motif i start by drawing over and over and adding to it and i try to do my own repeat we'll walk this around so I'll give you this and that. One of my favorite um, <coughs> designs in this fabric group is, is a jacquard-like print. I really love to study old types of um, prints and patterns. <laughs> card like one and when you see this kind of tuck this in your memory because I really want you to see it when it's all painted on, on all this fabric because it really it's my favorite pattern in the whole group this jacquard like and that again is on upholstery and things like that so um, you know what I'll show you how that one develops too a lot of tracing paper I use tracing paper to try to get things how I want them. So if you want to hold it like that, right? Yes. And I think they were trying to have you go down the center if you don't mind. It's something around there. Yeah. Yeah. So while these are going around, I'll just tell you, we've been doing these talks since um, for 20 years probably. And um, our kids used to go with us when they were little. And um, this is the best story I have. The best one. If I don't tell this story, Scott at the end of the, the talk goes, Deb, you didn't tell the story. So I have to tell the story. So we would go to these um, talks like this, and we have two girls and a son. And the girls both do art. The boy wants absolutely no part of it, right? So the girls, they would get so excited when they'd come to these shows. They're so excited, oh my gosh, because we'd let them run the cash register and, you know, do that. And, the, and, and our son, who's a redhead, he would, he hated it. He's like, oh my gosh, don't make me go. They pinch my cheeks, mom. They rub my head. Don't make me, please don't make me go. Please, please, please. And you know, Scott and I are like, come on, just, you're going. And um, so one day we're getting ready to come to one of these talks and, and we're running late, of course, we're always running late. And we're running late, running around the house. I'm like, Katie, Katie, where's Taylor? Taylor's our son. Taylor, where's Taylor? Mom, I don't know. I don't know where Taylor is. I go searching through the house. I finally get up to his bedroom. He has duct taped himself to the bed. <laughs> Thank you.